Hey guys, it's ESPN001 here, welcoming you to another one of those trophy list updates. So this one is of course slightly over a week because I was quite busy this past week. So this will have covered Monday, August 5th through Monday, August 12th, since it is now Tuesday, August 13th. Anyway, there are a few games to talk about this week. I don't know if this is going to be quite as long as some of the previous ones because I didn't do a ton in the trophy world this past week. So I worked on two games with no trophies or with no trophies earned in them. Uh, one of them was Destiny 2. I got my next exotic item. So one exotic item, nothing really much to say there. I mean, it's just it's Destiny 2. Although I do know that we are getting, uh, what is it, the year three expansion coming out in the near future. So that's going to be kind of cool. New stuff there. I'm sure it'll have new trophies, though, unfortunately, with how annoying the the first DLC already is, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay, I mean, the game's gotten a little bit better, it's, I don't mind logging into it for a little while every week just to check out what Xur is selling and maybe complete the Flashpoint of the week and all that kind of stuff, and then the other game I logged into for a few minutes was actually Fallout 76, because someone discovered that the infinite disarming glitch had come back, but unfortunately, they patched it really, really quickly, like the day before I tried to do it. So I didn't get to take advantage of that at all. But I am now a level 86, which is good. So only 14 levels left in that, plus killing the Scorch Beast Queen. I'm sort of waiting until the year two stuff starts for Fallout 76 with, you know, bringing back human NPCs and probably whole new quest lines and stuff. Sort of waiting for that point, because that's probably going to make it a little easier to level up and actually give you some new content to play and stuff. And then also, for Just Cause 4, they released the trailer for the last DLC. It's going to release on August 29th, which is a Thursday, for people who have the Gold Edition. And for everyone else, it's going to release, I believe, on September 5th. I believe that's the current plan for it. So that's pretty cool. So that's the final DLC. It actually looks really good. And it legit looks like it's going to be a send-off for the franchise. And, I mean, I'm going to stream it at some point, but it legitimately looks like it might be a send-off for the franchise. Like, it, it's structured almost as if it would be the final thing in the franchise, which kind of makes sense after how subpar Just Cause 4 was, even compared to 3. I'm not saying that's what I want, but if it is supposed to be a send-off, then I hope they do it well. Uh, but it does look really, really cool with, like, the hoverboard and all that kind of stuff. And the agency guys actually have, like, grappling hooks and stuff. That's going to be kind of cool. So as for the games I played for trophies in the past week, uh, like I said, uh, last week I had parents come and visit, which was a lot of fun. We got to do some fun stuff up here, got to eat a lot of good food. And I still got a few games done or a few trophies earned overall. So it's not like it was a completely unproductive week. So the first one was the Moose Man. This is the North American version. There is a North American and a European version. Was not the biggest fan of this one because of the way the collectibles are. Because you have a number of trophies. Like these first two, I believe, are story-related. Then this one and this one are both hidden trophies. Or maybe not hidden, but they're just missable trophies related to locating secret areas. And I don't know why the trophy image isn't there for that one. That sometimes happens, though. But I believe that one is story related. So these two are related to collectibles. There are a lot of collectibles in the game. There's 52 of them. Some of them are right along your path. Some of them are just a little bit off the beaten path. But a few of them, or a number of them, they require you to input random like button combinations, which is strange as all heck for this game. So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense as to why they make you do that, but it is something you're going to have to do a lot of the time, just inputting random buttons like left and right and turning the mask on and off and stuff. It's just kind of weird. I mean, even if you follow a guide, it's still not always that clear because sometimes the button presses in the guides might be just a little bit off, things like that. So, I mean, it's still not too hard or too long or anything of a game, but... It is just annoying to kind of deal with that. The collectibles are just not fun in this game. And this this is a really kind of weird game. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad game by any means, but it, it's definitely kind of on the weird side. It's a 2D side-scrolling type game. Not even really side-scrolling because you move at your own pace, so more of a 2D walking simulator. Uh, this is related to the collectibles. This is a story-related trophy. This is a story-related trophy. This section is awful, by the way, getting past that stupid fish. Because sometimes it'll just see you even when the light, like, isn't even on you. It's just, it's terrible. 
And then this riddle right here, it's not hard to figure out what you have to do. It was just hard to get it to work, like with the controls and stuff. I just couldn't get it to work for like 20 minutes. So I don't know if that was just me running into the problem or if it was other people as well, but I ran into that issue with it, so I don't really know what was up with that. It, it makes me much more hesitant about doing the EU version of this game if I ever see it on sale. Uh, you have another story-related trophy. This one's missable. Uh, story-related, 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 and collect all the artifacts, which is the collectible trophy. Like I said, there's 52 of them. Now, the one good thing about this game is that it has chapter select. So if you do happen to miss anything, as I did because I wasn't following the guide closely enough and didn't see that you were supposed to be stopping when you go down like a giant hill early in the game, and that was just on me for being dumb, but thankfully the game gives you... It lets you actually do a checkpoint select, which is like every two to five minutes, so you never have to replay much if you miss anything, thankfully. Uh, very happy about that because that meant very little time for that cleanup. So that is the one saving grace of this game is that it does have a chapter checkpoint select feature. Then I got a little bit of progress done in Uncharted 3, but of course I didn't get anywhere near as much as I wanted because I was so busy this past week. And yeah, I didn't make a whole lot of progress, but I won a plunder game without letting the opposing team score, and that's a nice silver trophy. That's not a particularly hard one, actually. Then I got the Return to Cinder medals, which is getting, I believe it's three grenade throwback kills in co-op, in a single co-op match. So that was actually very easy to self-boost just in split screen, so that was good. That was pretty easy. And then I might have made just a little bit of progress on a few of these. There's like retaliation medals are really, really easy, and that's something that I know I'll be able to get done. I mean, I'll be able to get a few of these done for sure. But we'll see. I mean, I haven't even started on, like, elimination wins. Fort co-op, haven't gotten anything done here with team objective or anything else. I mean, I've found a few treasures, but that's about it. And then a lot of these medals are not particularly hard to boost, though, which is good. So, I mean, I guess that's one good thing. And then I believe I got some trophies here in flashback. Yes, Mad Bomber. That requires you to get 10 grenade kills in a co-op game. That was not very hard. I got all 10 of those in like a single day. Nothing, nothing too difficult there, so don't have to worry too much about that. And then Shades. I might have gotten another trophy done in Shades. Oh, as for Plunder Wins, I'm at like maybe 10-ish Plunder Wins, so great. I got like a fifth of the way done. I mean... It would be great if I could actually get done with some of the win trophies, but like I've said before, I can't really seem to get that game to AFK properly because it tends to... I guess maybe it's something with my controller that it stops turboing between matches or something. I don't know why that is. Uh, it's a fairly cheap turbo controller, but it works for anything else that I have to do, like at any other point, as long as I just keep the button held down by with a piece of tape because that's the only way I can make it work. Uh, then I already finished the Shade medals. I got those done last week. And, like, Headhunter is... That's, like, headshots in multiplayer. That's pretty easy. And then, can't remember what Executioner is, but I know I've gotten a few of them. Uh, yeah. And then there's the final DLC in which... I'm already up to, like, also, like, 10 wins of Team Deathmatch. Because I did AFK sort of a few of them. Not that efficiently, though. And then the three metal pickup medals, I think I already had that one, but that's like probably about the easiest one. Commando's really easy, that's in the multiplayer. I, the assassin one's going to be annoying though, because that's stealth kills. And then headcracker is headshots in co-op, which is also quite easy. So I've gotten a few of the easy bronze and even an easy silver trophy done. So like I said, I'd love to see it get up to 80% completion. I'm, that's going to be sort of the goal I shoot for because I've written off the idea of getting the treasures done because I'm not about to suffer through that. It, it's just not worth it. Unless they decide to extend the server shutdown by like another month or something, which I don't see happening, but you never know, maybe. If they ever did decide to, if they did decide to do that, then yeah, I'd reconsider trying to 100% this game because it might be more worthwhile. But I don't really see that happening. Naughty Dog is not good about multiplayer stuff. I'm not a fan of the way they do their multiplayer and their multiplayer trophies and DLC trophies. They're terrible for all that, which is the main reason why I've said before, the next time they release a game, I'm not going to be ever putting another Naughty Dog game on my main account. I'll play it on my alternate account but I will not be putting it on my main account unless I know for a fact that it will never have any multiplayer or DLC 
because I just I'm sick of dealing with it and I'll just I'll play it on my alternate account so I get to experience the game and then be done with it and never have to worry about it being bad for my trophy list. So yeah. I mean that's that's why I always say, you know, if you want to play a game just because it has a hard platinum doesn't mean you should avoid playing it. I mean, just play it on an alternate account. You can make an extra account for free. I mean, you can't play online on an alternate account without PS Plus, but you can play on an alternate account for single-player games like that. So don't pass up a good game just because of the hard trophy list. Just play it on an alternate account, and that's what I'm going to do in the future for stuff like that. And then finally, I did both versions of Suicide Guy Sleeping Deeply. Now, these are the North American and then the European version. They have identical trophy lists with 11 gold trophies and a platinum, so very, very good for trophy hunters. Uh, the platinum is pretty easy. It can be done in under two hours. You can actually do it in under an hour if you're really, really fast about it. Uh, to get the Platinum, this is for, like, completing the Prologue level. I don't think any of the trophies are missable, thankfully. But this is, like, the Prologue level as well as the first statue. Because you have to find one statue in each of the six levels, including that Prologue. But they're all easy with a guide. And really, the entire game is very easy with a guide, with one minor exception. So this is in Chapter 1, but it's very, very easy. You just have to run through, like, an outhouse when you're in the car, the Doom Buggy, I mean. Then there's no miscellaneous trophies for Chapter 2, but there is a statue in it. Chapter 2 is the only one that's really annoying just because the platforming controls are so bad and it's a timed platforming section. If it wasn't timed, it wouldn't be a problem at all. People would probably get through it in first try. Now, the North American version, that level took me a solid like 20 to 30 minutes just because I kept screwing up either because of the game or just because of my own stupidity. But more often than not, it was because of the game. But hey, I eventually got through it on the North American, and then on the European version, I got through it in my second try. So, that was good. Uh, this is in the third level, as well as... You would get the statue after that second level, but this is in the third level, which is... The third level is definitely the most complicated and probably the most time-consuming overall, but it's still not too hard as long as you're following a guide. So, it's basically mixing a bunch of items together to solve some puzzles. It's... The game isn't necessarily that bad of a game, honestly. I mean, I've certainly played worse games than this. If the controls for the platforming, mainly in that second level, worked better, it probably would be a better game, and it would probably be a more well-liked game. Uh, then this is in the fourth level, as is this trophy. So you get two trophies in the fourth level. They're both very easy, because that's basically a level where you take care of a Tamagotchi. Uh, I didn't have any problems with this level in the North American version, but I did run into a couple issues on the EU version. Like, I ended up having to restart the level at one point because the play with the gotchi thing objective would not complete no matter what I did after, like, five minutes of throwing the ball around and stuff. So, I ended up having to reset the level once because I ran into that having an issue, but I don't know if that was just me or if I was doing something wrong or if it is just a glitch with the game. But regardless, it was at least still relatively easy to get through. I mean, I got through it the next try, no problem, but it was just kind of annoying that I had to reset that level. Would have finished the game even faster, because I think I did do the EU version in, like, right at an hour, whereas the North American version took closer to two because I didn't know what I was doing the first time. Uh, then this, this, and this are all going to be earned after, or during, or after completing the fifth level, which is the final level. And that one will be earned immediately after completing the fifth level. So, very easy platinum as long as you follow a guide. Like I said, it takes, you know, an hour to two hours without really a whole lot of difficulty. So, with that, level 68, 6%, 16,844 total trophies, 391 platinums, 2,230 golds, 4,238 silvers, 9,940 bronzes. So, for the upcoming week, what are the games I am going to work on? Well, you can probably see it down in the lower right here on the screen. That is LEGO Ninjago Movie, the video game. I got that from Gamefly. It's not one of the longer LEGO games. It's like a 20-hour LEGO game, so it's not too long, and I'll probably get started on that one. Uh, even though I know I just recently did another LEGO game. I might as well just get that done because I got it on Gamefly, and... Gamefly, you know, get some of those games done, those easy or, or more time-consuming games and stuff that I get from them. So yeah, I mean, I'll work on that probably this week. I will, hopefully I can get back to God of War, but I'm kind of putting God of War sort of on the back burner until I finish Uncharted 3 and the servers go down for it, I mean, because I mean, I'm not going to 100% it unless they extend the server shutdown, but 
uh, until the server shut down, that is kind of my main priority, and then I can really get back to God of War. Although at that point, I'm going to be starting to boost probably Far Cry 2 will be the next game that I boost, like the old next PS3 game. And I am going to add a couple other PS3 games eventually that are for boosting, not just Far Cry 2, but also Wolfenstein 09, because I think me and some other people were talking and figured out that you could get every single trophy with just two people, or in that in my case, with just two consoles. And if that's the case, then I will try to boost that game, because it would be kind of cool to have most of the Wolfenstein games done, because I can fit it, I can, I'm sure I could do that one. I know it's no harder than the Old Blood, really, because of the, even with the multiplayer, like, if you boost the multiplayer, it's on par with, like, the Old Blood, which isn't really that big a deal, because the Old Blood is a medium difficulty game. But, uh... There's also Wolfenstein 3D on the PS3, which is not particularly hard, nor is it all that time-consuming, but it's only a 100%. It's also cheap. I should probably buy it before they delist it at some point. So there's those. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to finish Wolfenstein the New Colossus. I don't have any intention to, but I would like to get all the other ones done. I mean, maybe I would do Cyber Pilot someday. The only problem with Cyber Pilot is that it's VR, and I don't have a VR. So, yeah, that's the obvious problem with that. But, I mean, I might do those someday, but right now the focus is Uncharted 3, and then the next focus afterward will probably be Far Cry 2, as well as the Resident Evils that I have on PS3, because neither of those are going to be that hard to boost. Because what I'm going to do with Resident Evil 5 is I want to find someone else that has two PS3s and two copies of the game, so that way we only need two total people because I have my two PS3s and two copies, so that would be by far the best option for that would be so that we can really speed the process up doing it that way. Because if there's only two people that need to get everything done, then we can finish everything in the same amount of time probably that the PS4 version would have taken. So even though it's more wins, it's only two people that need them. So we're, if we're always on the same team, it won't be a problem. It'll just take a little while. So we want to do that, and then Resident Evil 6 is a time-consuming 100% with all the multiplayer, but all but two trophies can be boosted with just two people. So I could get all but two of the trophies done from the DLC with just my two consoles, no problem. And I'll just find uh, another person to do the last part with, the last couple trophies with that. That won't be an issue at all. And then, of course, there's still someday, like, you know, Red Dead 1, there would be that Wolfenstein 09, possibly. There would be... Uh, I'm not really sure what else off the top of my head. I know that there's like Black Ops 2 and a couple other games, but we'll see someday. I mean, right now, like I said, Uncharted 3 is kind of the focus, even though I know I'm not going to get it done. I'm striving for that 80% completion. I think that would be a pretty solid number, or at the very least, at the very least 75. I think I, think I can do 75, and I, I think 80 is possible, depending on how much time I'm willing to put in. Because the boosting group is pretty reliable, like it's a massive discord of people that are constantly running sessions on the games. So it's, it's pretty reliable for a lot of stuff. You can usually find sessions all throughout the day. Now, if you are going to try to do those games, you probably could do Uncharted 2 from start to finish in what little time is left if you're really reliable about it. Because it, it took me... I got all the trophies within 36 hours, so it might take a little bit longer, it might not take as long, depending on, you know, how well the methods are working and if you can stay connected and stuff, but it is probably possible to still finish Uncharted 2, though I don't think I'd recommend it. Uh, the Last of Us, I don't know about The Last of Us just because the, the, the game takes so long to get through the base game multiplayer. You could probably finish the DLC in time, but probably not the base game multiplayer. You might if you only focused on Last of Us and not any of the other games. Uncharted 3, obviously, if you start today, you're not getting it done. But if you do want to get all the Uncharted Platinums, you can always still get the two multiplayer trophies from the base game, no problem, because they take less than an hour. Same thing for Uncharted 2. So, really, I think that's going to be about it. Like I said, I knew this wasn't going to be quite as long as of a video because there wasn't as much to talk about this week. And this week is still going to be kind of busy for me because I've got some stuff for grad school to work on, like some orientation stuff before my first class starts later on in the month. And then, along with that, I've got a couple job interviews. So, I'm going to be a little bit busy this week, but I will be streaming on Wednesday, Friday, Saturday this week. Don't know what I'll be streaming Wednesday, some kind of random game, probably for trophies. 
Uh, Friday will be uh, the start of a new Fallout challenge, which will probably take two streams like it usually does. And then Saturday should be the finishing of Wolfenstein the New Colossus. Because we're at like 80-something percent, like 86%, so pretty close to the end on the story. And then actually for the Fallout challenges, just a quick note on those. Oh, I know I'm going to regret the one that... The next challenge, the one that starts this week, is going to be for Fallout 3. And it's not a particularly unreasonable one. It's one I'm sure I'm going to be able to do. But the one after it, oh boy, you guys are going to love to watch me suffer in the one after it. It's a Fallout New Vegas challenge, and it's something that not even Midden Squad has been stupid enough to try, because most people are probably too sane to try it. But it should be interesting to see what happens. So, hope you guys enjoyed this trophy update. I will see you guys later this week for more streaming, for probably another Platinum Trophy video on like Thursday, because I'm a little bit backlogged on them. And yeah, and then see you guys next week for another update video.